Welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Susan Lopresti Wellness, Mind, Body, and Soul, the podcast where we explore the highs, the lows, and everything in between when it comes to a woman's life, her health, and all aspects of navigating the midlife landscape. I'm your host, Susan Lopresti, and today, I am going to delve into the fascinating world of emotional freedom technique, which is commonly known as EFT or tapping. And I want to begin by saying that I'm not a certified practitioner of this modality, but I do use it for myself personally with my own fears and my own phobias around being in a car, being alone in a car, and driving. And I have been following two very well-known practitioners in the field of EFT for years. One of them is Dawson Church, and he has the EFT universe. And the other practitioner that I follow is Nick Ortner, and he also has an app that you can sign up for. Dawson Church, I know you could get certified through his programs. So if you're interested and you want more information, I would suggest that you follow or go to either one or both of those two practitioners and learn more about them. Now, I will tell you, I'm not an affiliate of either one of them, so there's nothing in it for me. It's just that I know of both of them for many, many years, especially Dawson Church. I actually was probably first introduced to his teachings of EFT back in 2006 or seven. So that's how long I'm going back with that. And so my intention for this episode is as an introduction for you to explore if you do struggle with anxious feelings or thoughts or any feelings at all that are becoming crippling to you in any way at all, or maybe you know of someone else who is struggling and maybe you want to introduce it to them as well. Also, besides just fear and anxiety and phobias, you can also use EFT if you suffer with pain. And I have heard that it works really well for those who actually do suffer with chronic pain. So again, as I always recommend, before trying anything new, especially if you're already under doctor's care for any type of an emotional issue or challenge or pain, please check with your healthcare provider before beginning this program or any other protocol that I have discussed with you on my podcast. The intention of my podcast is to bring awareness to you of different alternative healing modalities that are out there and just give you the information, right? And then you take it from there. Once I present the information to you, if you find that this is something that's intriguing to you or you'd like to know more about, then it's up to you to dig deeper, do your research, do your due diligence on everything, and then you can make an educated decision whether this is something for you. And again, check with your healthcare provider. So with that in mind, let's get into what this therapy is all about. This therapeutic technique combines elements of cognitive behavioral therapy, with exposure therapy. So you may not know what either one of these are. So I'm going to give you a short detail of what they are. So let's start with cognitive behavioral therapy, which a lot of times is just abbreviated as CBT. So now you know. It's a form of psychological treatment that has been demonstrated to be very effective for a range of problems, including depression, 
anxiety disorder, alcohol and drug use problems, marital problems, eating disorders, and also severe mental illness. And there are numerous research studies that suggest CBT leads to significant improvement in functioning and the quality of life. And in many studies, CBT has been demonstrated to be as effective as or more effective than other forms of psychological therapy or psychiatric medications as well. And then exposure therapy is a type of therapy in which you gradually get exposed to the things, the situations, and activities that cause you fear. And there are a few different approaches to this therapy. It can help to treat several conditions like phobias, post-traumatic stress disorder, and also panic disorders with the stimulation of acupressure points. And that's where emotional freedom technique comes in. EFT is a form of psychological acupressure that involves tapping on specific meridian points on your body while focusing on a particular issue or an emotion that you're having that you're not happy with. It's designed to help balance the body's energy system and alleviate stress, anxiety, and also physical pain. So how does it work? Well, the first thing that we need to do, the first step is to identify the issue that's bothering you. And we pinpoint, right, that specific issue or problem that you want to address. So for me, it's a fear of being in the car and driving. That's my personal fear. It could also be physical pain. It could be an emotional challenge, a stressful situation, or that chronic pain issue that just doesn't go away. And then the next step in this process is to measure the intensity. So what's the rate of intensity of the problem on a scale from zero to 10? And this helps to monitor progress as you continue to proceed with the tapping. So you'll start to see a diminishing of that level as you continue and you go on. The next step is to create a setup statement that acknowledges the problem and affirms self-acceptance. For example, even though I have anxiety while being in the car, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. This setup statement also has its roots in those two schools of therapy, again, cognitive therapy and exposure therapy. Cognitive considers the large realm of your thoughts, your beliefs, your ways of relating to others, and the mental frames which you perceive the world and your experiences. And with exposure therapy, you vividly expose yourself to the negative experience. Rather than avoiding them, you are confronted with them with the goal of breaking your conditional fear response to the event. While exposure therapy is represented by the first half of the setup, cognitive work is done by the second half of the statement, which is the part that deals with the self-acceptance. EFT doesn't try to induce you to positive thinking. So you're not just telling yourself that things are going to get better, but you're simply expressing the intention of accepting yourself just where you are. And that's really the key. Even if you don't believe in the self-acceptance or it sounds like a lie to you, EFT suggests that you say it anyway. You will soon find yourself going from disbelief of your statement 
to believe in you statement. And like I said in the beginning, I am not a practitioner. I am not certified. I do not teach it. I'm just going to demonstrate to you how I do it and the sequence that I do it in and what my setup statement is. And you can follow along. So the tapping sequence is that you're tapping on those meridian points while repeating a reminder phrase, such as this headache or this anxiety. The common tapping points include the karate chop. And so I would say, even though I have anxiety while driving my car, I love and accept myself. And then you go to the top of your head and you say it again. Even though I have anxiety while driving my car, I love and accept myself. And then you go to the eyebrow. Even though I have anxiety while driving my car, I love and accept myself. The side of the eye. Even though I have anxiety while driving my car, I love and accept myself. Under the eye. Even though I have anxiety while driving my car, I love and accept myself. Under the nose. Even though I have anxiety while driving my car, I love and accept myself. The chin. Even though I have anxiety while driving my car, I love and accept myself. Collarbone. Even though I have anxiety while driving my car, I love and accept myself. Under the arm. Even though I have anxiety while driving my car, I love and accept myself. And then you start over at the top of the head. And then you could add different things into that. I am becoming a better driver each and every day, and I love and accept myself. Even though I have anxiety while driving my car, I feel more confident and secure while driving, and I love and accept myself. And you can just take it from there and keep going. And so what are the benefits of EFT? First and foremost, it reduces anxiety and stress. And that's exactly what I feel before I get in my car, I'm stressed out. Once I'm in my car, I start to feel waves of anxiety coming over me and it's crippling to me. So I have begun to do this again. And like I said, I was first introduced to EFT back in, I believe it was 2007 or 2008, because I was in the process actually of getting divorced, selling my house and taking me and my daughter and moving to a place by ourselves. So there was a lot of anxiety. There was a lot of stress. And this helped me tremendously. So it does definitely help with anxiety and stress. I know it firsthand, right? So what it does is it significantly reduces the level of cortisol and cortisol is that stress hormone and it leads to a calmer state of mind. And that's all we really want. It also helps with pain relief. Like I said, many people have reported relief from chronic pain conditions after practicing EFT, even more so than pain meds at times, I've heard testimonies about that. It helps with emotional healing. EFT can help in releasing unresolved emotional issues, leading to improved mental health and improved emotional well-being. It also helps to enhance performance. So athletes and students and professionals use EFT to overcome performance anxiety and to improve 
focus and concentration. And there is scientific evidence that backs this up. There are several studies that have demonstrated the efficacy of EFT. Research published in the Journal of Nervous and Mental Disease in 2012 showed significant reductions in anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms after EFT sessions. So how do you get started with EFT? You wanna learn the basics. There are numerous online resources, including videos and tutorials that really can help you learn the basic techniques of EFT. And like I said, you may want to seek out, and I know of two practitioners, and I am not an affiliate of either one of them, but you can seek out a professional practitioner who you can work with, especially if you have like very deep emotional issues or trauma. My recommendation really is to find a practitioner that could work with you one-on-one -on -one. But for like my issue, which is mainly just around being in a car and it's manifested a little bit more because back in February, I, was, I wasn't driving, but I was in a car accident. So it just stirred up a lot of those feelings all over again. But I feel like doing it myself, I have a handle on it, but for like severe trauma, you may want to seek out an EFT practitioner. My other suggestion is that you really need to practice regularly. Like any other therapeutic practice, consistency is key. Regular practice can help you to experience the full benefits of EFT. So for me, for example, you just don't want to do it every time you're about to get in the car because I don't even drive every single day. And some days I don't use my car for two or three days. But in the morning, I have a meditation practice. I have a yoga routine. I do all of these modalities first thing in the morning. And EFT is one of the things that I do, especially if I know that in the next couple of days, I'm going to be going somewhere and doing some driving. I try to work up to it and really do a full practice of it for a couple of days leading up to that event. So emotional freedom technique is a powerful tool for emotional and physical healing. Its simplicity and its effectiveness make it accessible to anyone who's willing to try it, whether you're dealing with stress, anxiety, pain, emotional challenges, whatever it may be for you. EFT offers a pathway to greater well being. So I just want to thank you so much for joining me here today to explore EFT and what it's all about. And I hope that you find this technique as beneficial as I do and as many others have as well. Remember, the journey to emotional freedom is just a few taps away. Again, thank you for joining me here. If you enjoyed this episode, please, do me a favor, leave me a comment, leave me a review. This helps to get my message out to more and more people. That's the purpose of my podcast. Also, if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to it. So the next time that I release an episode, which is every Tuesday at 9 a.m., you will be notified that there's a new episode out there for you to listen to and enjoy and learn from. And that's the purpose of my podcast, to offer you these healing modalities. So as we're getting older and as we're aging, the purpose is that we live long, healthy, productive lives. And EFT might just be the ticket that you need to do so. Until the next time, be well, stay happy, and bye for now. Take good care, everyone.